Why is speeding dangerous? From a physics perspective, anytime we have vehicles traveling at different speeds, we have the potential for conflicts to result. As a traffic engineer, we never want two or more vehicles to occupy the same point at the same time. Speeding can impact a driver's ability to respond to a roadway or roadside hazard, and substantial overspeeding may result in a situation where the vehicle's capability to respond to a driver's reaction is not possible. To answer the initial question, I'm going to focus more on a vehicle's speed in relation to other vehicles. I'll also talk about risks related to driving too fast and for driving too slowly. The curve shown in this graph was created by David Solomon based on research related to comparisons between a vehicle's speed and the average speed of other vehicles, which is shown on the y-axis, and their crash rates, which is shown on the x-axis. This graph was developed based on 10,000 crashes, and the general relationship has been confirmed by other researchers. There are two curves on this graph. The lower one is the curve for the daytime crashes, and the higher one is for nighttime crashes. The relative location of the nighttime curve shows us that we can expect a higher crash rate during nighttime hours for any speed variation. The middle of the x-axis shows the average speed of vehicles. At this point, there's no variation from the average speed. We can see that this is the low point for each of the curves, meaning that vehicles traveling at the average speed are less likely to be involved in a crash. As a vehicle speed deviates from the average, the crash rate increases. As the speeds grow in their difference from the average, the crash rate continues to increase. This is the same for speeds that are lower and higher than the average, and each direction has roughly similar shapes. Overall, the greater the variation in speed of any vehicle from the average speed of all traffic, the greater its chance of being involved in a crash. In general, there's a higher risk at nighttime, but the curve generally follows the same shape as the daytime curve. 